Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. At Stranger Lake near Lac Sole, Ontario, north of Soup Lookout, the witnesses are both First Nations people and will not talk easily with the press. However, both have privately said that they saw a gray shape that scared them. Both witnesses were in their boats driving along the shore. It was in the second week of June, two weeks ago, Sachigo Lake First Nation resident R.B. was on Stranger Lake when he thought he saw something. I was out in the boat riding along the shoreline of Sachigo Lake when I saw something moving in the bushes, he said. I circled back in the same direction for a second look, not too long after, but I saw nothing. What piqued R.B.'s curiosity, however, was what he saw on the shoreline about 100 feet back from the water. When he came back later that day, there were large tracks close to where I saw the movement earlier, he said. Two days later, I went back. I first thought what I had seen was a moose move in the bushes, but the tracks were much bigger than those of any moose. While R.B. has heard many of the local legends over the years about the large hairy creatures said to have visited our area, he is not fully convinced of anything at this point. I've heard the stories, but I don't know. I've never seen tracks like that before in my life. My sisters came up with me, and they were surprised by what they saw. One of his sisters, Sook's lookout resident, VM, actually measured the footprints. They are 15 inches long and 6 inches wide, she said. They are all over the place. Some of them are located near the cabin I have on Stranger Lake, but are mostly all faded now. All I can say is that I've lived in the bush all my life, and I've never seen anything like it. It is a remote fishing lake on the Precambrian Shield. On to the next one. In St. Catharines, Ontario, under a bridge on Highway 406 West, westbound, a bulky, hairy, brown-haired being was seen walking under the bridge. We are tractor-trailer drivers and both saw Bigfoot at 3 p.m. Central Time on Highway 406 in Hamilton, Canada. We were crossing the bridge westbound that has solid cement rails all the way across. Cars have no way of seeing over the rails down the 100 feet or so to the bottom. This is where we had seen a big hairy creature walking south on the west bank. Well, when I pointed to Margie, who was sitting in the passenger seat, to see as we were going by it at around 50 to 60 miles per hour, she saw the creature going north in the same location. The water beside the creature looked about ankle depth pouring south. The creature was on the dry, rocky part. The creature was looking straight ahead south and to the side east toward the water. It was walking along as we would walk to town or something. The creature was completely full of hair. I do remember seeing some flesh on the arms and elbows. The feet and ankles were massive. The ankles were as massive as the legs. The long hair looked groomed. All over the body, too, it was brownish hair. Also, the arms appeared to be longer than usual. That was what caused my first real attention to it. I've never been to this location before or since. I'm always looking around as I go down the road and always look in places like that. The water runs south. We entered Buffalo, New York by mistake. We did not realize the company wanted us to enter from the Detroit side. We have not had the opportunity to be there again because of this. On to the next one. North of Nepigeon, Ontario, driving on Highway 1, at night when the creature crossed the road and went into the brush, it was dark brown or black in color, and I think about seven feet tall. I didn't stop to look for it since it was dark, a trucker was behind me, but I didn't speak with him. It is a mixed forest area and very mountainous with several small lakes nearby. 
On to the next one. South of Souk Lookout in Ontario, a friend and I were boating in a creek in the early morning. It was a very rainy and windy day. We came around a bend and I saw a figure approximately 30 to 40 yards from my position to my right. At first, I thought it was a bear, but the figure was too tall. Then for a moment, I thought it was a moose. Then I realized it was neither because it was bipedal and thought to myself, that's a person. Then I had a moment of confusion, wondering what a person would be doing in the woods in this sort of weather. Then I quickly realized that what I was seeing was not a person either. It was a bulky black creature. I was not struck so much by its height, but by its width. The shoulders were very broad, and it had a generally thick appearance, topped by a small knobby head. I watched it steadily walk toward the woods. About 10 to 15 seconds later, it entered the wood. As it entered, it walked up a hill and disappeared into the trees. Several things struck me. Rather than ducking under a branch, it swatted the branch over its head with its left arm. It also never turned back in our direction to look at us and walked calmly away from us. I was very struck by the incident and afterwards was surprised that it didn't occur to me to alert my friends to what I was seeing. I asked him later if he had seen anything in the creek that day. He said no, because most of the time he had his head down, shielding his face from the wind and rain. It was about 8 a.m., rain and wind, mid-60s in a low-lying wet area near a creek. On to the next one. In northern Ontario, while moose hunting early one crisp morning, I was walking in the sphagnum moss all alone deep in the bush. It was in a hilly area and not many people frequent the area at all. While stalking, I had slipped in the moss on a wet stone. When I hit the ground from the impact, I had been shaken a bit from the fall, getting my bearings. I had looked up and, to my amazement, a thing was standing there looking at me. I had thought at first it was a moose getting up from the long grass, 10 yards from where I had fallen, but as I looked closer, it wasn't a moose. I had brought my gun up and while trying to swing it on, it looked at me in amazement, like it knew it was going to be shot. What I had seen was not a moose. I couldn't fire on it. Because of the way it moved and the noises it made, they had startled me so much so, I had thought, is that a man? But it was covered in black hair and running so fast, it was amazing. It was running and yelling, so I watched it disappear out of sight running. I was amazed at the movement and the matter in which it had eluded me. Amazing. I still remember its scream. After it had known I was turning my gun on it, it was a very quick decision to make. I was on one knee and trying to look at it and hip a line a shot. I had enough time to see it that when it started to run, I had gotten up and targeted it as it ran. But, as I had mentioned, I was amazed at what I had seen and heard, so I could not shoot. I was seeing an animal run, but it was so manlike I couldn't shoot. I have since that day frequented this area and found what I feel to be an unusual sheltering spot. When the initial ordeal was over, I was left with a weird feeling, one of when I had fallen and this thing came to see if I was alright, and to my surprise seeing him that close instinctively raising my gun on him. He reacted to my movements of harm and I could see it in his movements. He was scared. It was very quick and a very close encounter. Maybe it's not the Bigfoot you seek, but it was large, black, ran upright, very fast, and I still believe its movements to be extremely man-like. I found some place I feel like was unusual for a shelter. I'd found a big track there one day showing some people this bush area. I had covered it up. It was during the early hours, 7 a.m. Cool, crisp day, very quiet. Deep brush, hilly country, many swamps and dry grass swamps. Thick cover, evergreen, many birches and poplars. There have been some reports near this area, but east of here, about one and a half hours away. On to the next one. 
When visiting Delaware, be sure to visit the Zawandel Museum to witness the famous mermaid they have on display. The two-foot-long mummified creature has been on display at the location since the early 1940s. Mermaid myth and lore was first revealed in ancient mythological times, described as half-human from head to torso, then dolphin-like to the bottom of the tail. Its majestic beauty is intriguing to the eye, and its authority over all creatures the sea speaks of mighty power. The subject fascinates and is studied by many in the cryptozoological field. It is believed that they have rescued sailors from drowning when their ship capsized, saving children who ventured out too far and were being overcome by the fierce waves of the sea. Others claim they have intervened and prevented shark attacks on humans. However, there seems to be an evil and devious version of this such creature referred to as sirens. In fact, there are more recorded attacks on humans over the years and disappearances which have been attributed to sirens. It is said that the mermaid or siren would seduce unsuspecting males with a seductive song, luring the man into the water. The male falls for the ploy and enters the sea making his way towards what he believes is a woman standing alone looking for companionship. The lower half of her body is covered and hidden by the sea. He falls victim to her scheme. Once close enough, she lunges forward, embedding her long, sharp claws into the victim. As the individual screams in fear and agony, they are pulled under the water where death is imminent. No one can say for sure what happens to the bodies after the attack. In some cultures, it is believed they feed the creatures of the sea with the corpse, while others believe they themselves feast upon the body. In such a large, unexplored sea, we may never know the truth. Be warned, if in Delaware, you may see more than just a mermaid on display and cornfield. Some have witnessed the Route 1 Bigfoot, seen in the Sussex County Territory near the Brumbly Family Park campground, and is said to be 7 to 8 feet tall with brown fur. In the summer of 2010, a family was on vacation staying at the campground. They were at the end of their stay and packed up and set to head out. As they exited the campground onto Route 1 heading north, they came up to a cornfield on the right side of the car. The stalks of corn stood high and looked to be a thick and healthy crop. The woman in the passenger seat watched the corn as they drove by. She noticed a figure walking in the stalks who ducked down as they passed. This would not normally seem strange, but the fact the stalks looked to stand over six feet tall and only came up to the chest of the figure. The woman immediately asked her husband if he had witnessed what she saw, but he had not. To this day, she cannot confirm or deny if this was in fact the Route 1 Bigfoot. On to the next one. When one thinks of Sasquatch in Florida, it is usually the infamous skunk ape. The name comes from having an odor very similar to a skunk. Some say it smells this way due to it seeking refuge in alligator holes. Some believe certain gases permeating from the ground in the swamps is the cause of the odor. The skunk ape legend originated from Native American lore. The tribe's people witnessed and had many encounters with the creature, passing along stories over the decades. They respect the creature by not disturbing it. The beast, in fact, is intelligent in its way of thinking when choosing where to reside. Thick swampland is a perfect location to remain hidden and ideal for such a creature of its size. This allows it to move freely and escape from human interaction quite easily. Also, it gives the beast an advantage when hunting and chasing down an animal-type food source. The swampy area also provides a vegetation source of nutrition to survive. One not-so-famous cryptid yet is still seen is what is referred to as the green swamp ape. Said to stand seven and a half feet tall, 
having green, mothy-colored fur and permeates a vile skunk smell. Could it be the skunk ape, a family member, or just merely another creature lurking in the area? Nevertheless, skunk ape or not, it has been seen multiple times by many in the Everglades region of Miami-Dade County. In 2015, a young couple were out on a date and took a ride down the Pahe Oki Road. Approximately around 10.15 p.m., they arrived at the Pahe Oki Lookout Tower. This tower sits deep in the Everglades and is a popular spot for young people. They parked the car and, according to them, started doing what young couples do when alone in a car. A few minutes later, there was a loud bang on the passenger side of the car. The young man jumped out of the car and ran to the side. He saw a huge dent in the door and a large stone lying near the front tire. He looked around, but could not see anyone or anything. As he was walking around to the front of the car, he noticed a horrible smell and heard a rustling in the bushes. Concerned about getting hit with a stone, he assumed it was someone messing with him. He hurried, jumped in the car, and put up the window. He started the car in a hurry to get out of the area. When he turned on the headlight, about 20 feet from the car in a thick area of bushes stood what he described as something resembling the Incredible Hulk. It stood around 8 feet tall, was dark green, and looked moss-covered. Its shoulder width was around four feet wide. The creature let out a loud vocal that was low and guttural, yet ended with a high pitch. The young man state screamed. He put the car in drive and sped off. The sighting was not brought to the authorities' attention, as the young couple had been smoking an illegal substance and feared having charges brought up on them. Also, it was said that the area where the encounter occurred they should not have been there in the time frame that they were. On to the next one. If ever in the state of Georgia to hunt, be on the lookout for the beast known as Hogzilla. The creature first made its appearance in 2004. It's a wild boar said to be over 12 feet long weighing well over 1,000 pounds. Many hunters, hikers, and campers have claimed to be chased off by what they describe as an unusually large hog. Many accounts have claimed the hog ravaged through occupied campsites and fears no human. One hiker claimed the hog came out of a thick area of bushes and began to charge him. The hiker's only escape was to climb up a nearby tree and wait for the animal to leave. It has been claimed that a hunter shot and killed the hog. Even if this is true, and the beast has been exterminated, who's to say there's only one? Also, be on the lookout for a creature even Hogzilla would fear, known to one person as the Peeping Bigfoot, because its behavior of looking into windows, it is brown in color and stands eight feet tall. A woman in Macon County near Willow Lake was home with her son and newborn baby. The father was at work as he was scheduled for a second shift at his place of employment. As the woman sat on her couch in the living room, she saw a shadowy figure walk by one of the windows. Living in the country, they often had wild animals pass through their property, so she was not initially concerned. Shortly after, she heard a noise like a large bird hitting the side of the house. It was loud enough that it woke up the baby. From the other side of the house, she could hear the baby crying. She walked into the baby's room and stopped dead in her track. Looking in a window that was no less than seven feet from the ground was a large figure. It had red glowing eyes and it seemed to fog up the window as it breathed. It then left the window. The woman grabbed the baby and claimed she called her husband and the police. The police and her husband arrived at about the same time. They searched the property but found nothing. The authorities felt it was a peeping Tom and possibly looked big in the window from the light of the moon casting a shadow. The woman has yet to have another experience like this. 
but now has a loaded shotgun in place for if whatever she saw returns. If you have an encounter you would like to share, you can reach me by submitting it to the email in the description box down below. Also, if you would like to send in a physical letter of your encounter or any fan mail, I also have a P.O. box, which you can find in the description box down below. I love just hearing from all of you, so those options are available if you ever feel like reaching me. I hope you enjoyed those encounters. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day, so be sure to hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much, and until next time, bye!